Ew. Hey, it's me. Today is episode two of Create This Book 2. I'm so excited. It's about time. So let's get into this. The pages are stuck together. I think I must have gotten Mod Podge on the edges of a couple of the pages, but it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. So I'm gonna start with this page. The directions say, create confetti. Make confetti by cutting small pieces of paper or other materials. Glue it onto this page. Also, this page is black. Why is this page black? Well, uh... I don't know, I just thought it would be nice to mix things up. Okay, so let me just get this book out of here and bring in a blank piece of paper. Wow, that was a cool trick. Mm -hmm. I need to prepare my surface by laying down some paper towels <coughs> and sneezing on it for good luck, of course. And I'm breaking out some watercolors. One thing I hate about this package is it doesn't stay open on its own, so you gotta lay stuff on top of it. Ugh. When I pay $4.71 for a paint set, I demand quality. I'm just kidding. Okay, time to start actually painting. So I'm just painting some blobs of colors, nothing too specific, just like throwing colors on there, blending them together. And you know, it's a fun time. I love how the piece of paper is like slowly inching over. Uh-uh-uh come back here come back here but yes i'm basically going for like the barfed up rainbow look and then let that dry make sure to check your paper towel for bonus art oh it's beautiful okay it's dry and perfect almost but i'm just using this for the confetti so it's time to destroy this i started doing it this way by just cutting with scissors but i struggle with cutting in straight lines so i ended up bringing out my cutting mat and used a ruler and exacto knife instead for the most part that did work out better what was that So we've got a hula skirt, and I'm gonna start cutting across. No. To create little squares of confetti. Oh, this is kind of like those soap cutting videos, but not as satisfying or cool. Definitely not as clean cuts. <laughs> But still, still, I've got my confetti and I'm gonna pull out a fresh sheet of paper and I'm just gonna sketch out a little cupcake, you know, something I've never done before. I need to get my sarcasm under control and I will someday, not today. I'm gonna erase the pencil lines so they're just dark enough where I can still see them but light enough where they won't show through when I'm done. And I'm back at it again with the watercolors and I'm just gonna go wild. Whoa, my jaw just cracked. Could you hear that in the recording? <laughs> wild 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 i made rainbow barf confetti so naturally i'm doing a rainbow barf cupcake to go with it sounds appetizing but you know of all the cupcakes i've drawn i've never done one quite like this <laughs> I like it. Once the watercolor dried, I did go back in with some colored pencils to clean up and define the edges a little bit more, darken some of the little shadows, and now I'm cutting this out. You may notice I had that same temporary tattoo from last week. I do shower, I promise. Just not every week. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This was filmed last week, that's why. So I'm gonna glue down the cupcake on the black page and look how nice that color pops. I told you the black page was a good idea and I'm adding some little lines with a white pen. Hey, Opie, no, no. So it's not like a, you know, floating cupcake. About that confetti, finally, I'm gonna start placing the confetti all over the page. I probably should have either made larger confetti or painted the colors closer together because a lot of the squares kind of came out looking like just solid colors. But still, there is a subtle watercolor effect and these squares got evicted. Why? They were so happy there. But then I kind of just stuck more confetti up there later anyway. I don't know. Final step, I'm going to use some Mod Podge on there to seal everything down and keep it nice in the book. Always use paper underneath when you do this to protect the rest of the pages. You don't want to glue the pages together, that would be real dumb. And final, final step, I'm going to date the page. Fingers down my side. Girl, you look mighty fine. Mm, 
not like that. I am gonna try to add a date to every page that I do because I think it'll be nice to have that when I do the final flip through. That's a while away from now, but it will be nice to reference when I did what just in case, you know, I improve or something like that. <laughs> I love how this page turned out. I think it looks real cute. Okay, alert, 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 nail change, tattoo gone, slight background color change. Yes, this was filmed a few days later. Now that we've got that out of the way, <laughs> let's move on to the next page, which is... Hi! Sorry, that was just my page marker. Create repairs. Number one, crumple, rip, cut, and or stain this page. Number two, try to repair the damage. Easy enough, but first, I gotta break this book in a little bit. Look away if you can't handle this. And now to damage this page. Uh, ooh, I don't want to. Okay, so I'm crumpling up the pages, tearing them. And to create stains, I'm gonna use some chalk pastel, which will kind of look like dirt. Perfect. I think I successfully made a mess of this page. Now to repair it, I'm going to wipe away some of the excess chalk. Ugh and then try to smooth out the wrinkles and I placed some crappy painted rocks on there to add some weight and weight and there, good enough for now. Now how to repair the rips? Um, tape? Wrong! Band-aids! What? Fun fact, I actually designed this template so that the different sizes of band-aids are organized. Band-aid, contact me. It was a school project from like two years ago and I still use this box. Anyway, I decided to be a little bit obnoxious with these repairs by using band-aids instead of tape so that it was like more obviously repaired. So it's like cute kind of. Okay, and just like that, this page is done. Just kidding. This page definitely needs decoration, so I decided to draw an old abandoned bookshelf with some beat up stuffed animals just hanging out there to go with the kind of repair theme, you know, because they've been repaired. Once I've gotten that drawn, I actually outlined the band-aids. They looked like random strips of flesh, so I decided to outline them and draw on the little details so that they would pop out a bit more, and then I outlined some of the wrinkles as well to make them a little bit more obvious. Um, isn't that kind of the opposite of repairing? Hmm. I can't even follow my own instructions. Next, I'm gonna lay down some chalk pastel over these guys. I wanted them to look really worn and old, so I figured, you know, let's start with a nice layer of brown. And then I used colored pencils to add in a lot more detail and shading. And this bear was kind of the struggle. Um, he was, well, he, he was looking pretty good until I filled in the eyes with solid black instead of shading them, which was a mistake. So then, boom, I had to make the whole bear a lot darker so that he didn't look like he had two black holes in his head. Still kind of looks like that, but it'll get better later. And now I'm working on his friend over here who looks really annoyed. This bunny is just hashtag bitter, hashtag given up, hashtag done. <laughs> And I'm just adding some extra shadows around to frame them a little bit better, give it a little atmosphere, you know, and some highlights with a uh, white acrylic paint. And that's it. I'm super happy with how this page came out. It's basically exactly what I envisioned for, you know, the dirty old stuffed animals with the repairs. And I don't know, I think it fits nicely. And I did date the page as well, also adding my little signature on there. And you may notice by the dates on the page that I usually start filming the first half of the week and then the rest of the week I spend editing the video so you know it's a whole process okay and the last page I'm gonna do for this episode is create a difference in altitude oh look who knows words <laughs> Sorry. On this page, display something you find underwater. On this page, display something you find in the sky. Kind of sounds like I want you to go on like a literal scavenger hunt in the sky and underwater. That's not what I meant. Anyway, here I go sketching out my idea. Oh my gosh, what is that tail? I stressed over the layout of this one. I sat there and stared at my sketch for like 20 minutes. 
Okay, I ended up changing some things around. I wanted to make the two pages kind of look like they're together, but also not, so it's kind of like a cool thing. So in the sky, I drew clouds and a rainbow, and then underwater, I drew a baby seal. Aww. And then the rainbow kind of like comes around and goes underwater following the seal to kind of tie everything together. That rainbow can travel, man. It cuts through clouds, dives through water. It's pretty epic. I chose a baby seal because, I mean, well, they're adorable, but also since it's like the closest looking sea creature that I could think of to a cloud, so I thought that would be cool because, you know, you got the clouds in the sky and then a sea cloud. <laughs> Do I ever make sense? I don't know. I have to say my favorite part of this is the underwater area and the rainbow going underwater. I was kind of nervous about doing that. I didn't know if it was going to look dumb, but I think it turned out cool. I also like how the blue from the water and the blue from the sky kind of like merge together, so it's like trippy. And finally, of course, I did some light shading for the clouds and the seal, and that's when I decided that I hate those white stars. So I colored them with a metallic silver sharpie to make them look less hateable. It did help, and then I also added some silver trim to the bubbles, and it's done. I think it looks really cool slash slightly confusing, so that's good. I've actually been really happy with everything I've done so far in this book, and I'm just, I'm really excited to continue with this series, which is a good thing because we've got many more episodes to go. So I hope you enjoyed this. I do want to feature some artwork that I've received from you guys. I looked through and found a bunch of different front covers because I still haven't decorated my front cover. By the way, if you're interested in other videos on Create This Book 2, Nerdy Crafter will be putting out a video on it today as well. Also, also, I know a lot of you are very new to this and have just recently discovered Create This Book. So even though I'm doing Create This Book 2, many of you are just now starting the first Create This Book, but there are some other YouTubers doing Create This Book now. I know So Craftastic just released a Create This Book video, and I have a whole playlist of other really great Create This Book videos I found around YouTube, and I'm working on the Create This Book 2 playlist as well. I'll just keep updating both of those as I find more videos, and of course, I'll link all of this in the description in case you want to check any of it out. So there is no shortage of Create This Book content out there if you need inspiration or if you want to join in and make your own videos do it you're welcome to be a part of it too yes i've been talking forever now so i'll shut up and i'll see you guys next friday bye